All right, we're back. My name is Jeff Ginger. I'm the director of the Champaign-Urbana Community Fab Lab, and today I'm going to be showing you through how we can make multi-layer stickers with Silhouette Studio. So the first thing you're going to need to do is find yourself a Fab Lab computer because we will have the Silhouette Studio designer version installed as well as the library associated with that computer. And you can go ahead and launch it as you've done in the past. And uh, there are a couple of methods I'm going to be going over today. They're, they're both interesting in the different ways. Uh, they're per both perfectly valid ways of learning about how to do stickers. Uh, once again, we're not actually requiring you to make your own unique sticker for this second multi-layer part, because it can be actually a lot of work to reverse engineer and work with somebody else's design that's already been made. So and, and once you do more of that, you'll be a little bit more confident in making your own designs. So once you've launched Silhouette, you can go up here to File in the upper left and go to Library and open up the library. Now by default you're going to see sort of the, the not so great library that comes with Silhouette, uh, but you'll notice on the left here there's a number of different folders. I'm going to ping over here, just oh, you can't see my pinging anyway. The mouse on the left side, hopefully you can see all those different folders there. And uh, you'll notice there's some cute creatures, we have some paper decor, and there are some really cool like foldable paper what's-its you can put together, but that's, that's not what we're doing for this assignment. Go ahead and pick something either out of cute creatures or monsters and you can load that up into Silhouette. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a simple one to show you how it looks, and then I'll kind of do a piece of a more complicated one just to give you a sense of how it might scale up. So we'll first start with, we'll do the killer whale, see if that works. So once I double click on that, this will load in this picture of the killer whale or the schematic. Now by default, this is all grouped. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is right click, and you try right clicking on one of the lines to make sure that you maintain focus on the object. And you can just go to ungroup right there, and that will split all of these things apart. You'll notice there's the eye is now its own separate eye. eye. We have our eyebrow. <clears throat> I think this is the, the back of the eye. We have another fin, etc. Now there's a few challenges to this. Uh, the first of which is that you have to fit it all on the sheet. So actually one of the things I could have done before I ungrouped it is I could have shrunk everything to fit it a little. Oop, that's not the, the one I want to do. Let's scroll up here. We'll do this shrinking. So if I grab the corner there, this will shrink things proportionally. Now I could also rotate the entire work and that's that's another way to try to fit it on here. But we're gonna be aiming for like little four by four squares of vinyl because that's kind of the typical size we work with as scrap at the Fab Lab. So uh, I can, one of the ways to help estimate that is I can go up here to the, in the upper right, uh, this page design settings, I'm sorry, design page settings. And we can go down here to reveal some of the cutting mat which will allow us to count the squares. So if we're doing a four inch by four inch square, we can do one, two, three, four. We can sort of assume that it can just go in the upper right or upper left of our design. And so I'm gonna shrink that so it'll fit. Actually, we even have to go a little smaller than that, don't we? Okay, so that's, that's fitting in there a little bit better. And so that'll fit on a four inch by four inch square. And I'm gonna move these other pieces apart because what I would like to do to effectively cut this is put all the different colors of the vinyl all on the sheet at the same time. So we're going to have the four inch by four inch square up here, or maybe the, the dark background color of the killer whale. And then we might have another piece of square down here where you sort of separate these out to different colors. Now, one of the things that is a little bit hard to do is to know exactly what color each piece should be. You can try to guess and figure that out, but something that helps me is to look at a picture of the original uh, library schematic or the library uh, item. Now you could just go back up to library and sort of keep peeking at that, but we've made that a little bit easier. Uh, what you can get to go do is go to our handy dandy Google here, and uh, we should be able to go to the Fab Lab website to fish this out. So just into Google, you can type Fab Lab if you don't remember, and if you're anywhere near Champaign Urbana, the first link should be the Champaign Urbana Community Fab Lab. We go to that website and under get started here, we have a tutorials section. This is the section we've been linking to in many of our other assignments for the class and should just be one of the places you should be familiar with. And if we go to Google Drive, you'll find a nice link to a breakdown of all kinds of different tools. Uh, we're gonna be making our stickers on these small electronic cutters. So uh, we have uh, electronic cutters over here on the right. And if I click on that, that's gonna lead to a whole bunch of other things including on the far right here, we have Silhouette Library Location. And if we click on that, we get a not very exciting file with just a link to, hopefully, here we go, the location. And you'll see here, this is a bunch of pictures that basically mirror what you saw in the library. So we can go under Cute Creatures, 
and hopefully I can find my killer whale, my cute little killer whale. There's my cute little killer whale, and I can go ahead and download that. And uh, let's see if I can open that up off the desktop. Where's our, oh, I guess I didn't put it on the desktop. Where is my killer whale stored? That is the question. It's under downloads. Okay, we drop killer whale there and we should be able to see. So now I've got the killer whale on the side and this makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Well, you know, your first instinct might be that maybe this sticker would be the dark black of the killer whale, but if you think about it, we're gonna have to layer it. This is the challenge with layered stickers is figuring out how, what layer goes in what order. And you can kind of simulate this in Silhouette Studio by going up here to the paint bucket tool and uh, we can say, give this uh, outer layer a darker color and I can just put one on top of the other and look, we're sort of simulating how that sticker is gonna to go together. We're gonna to cut this one out of black vinyl, we're gonna cut the other one out of white or maybe a, a beige kind of color, and we could layer them together to do that. So I'm gonna color that one black. The machine, when it's cutting, it doesn't care what color the inside of this is colored. It's really only gonna care about that red outside cut line. So if it's hard to see, you can always get rid of it again, but it's going to transparent. Uh, but instead, I'm gonna go black here. And so this other little fin that's gonna you know overlap on top of this, so that needs to be black as well. So select that. I lost my paint bucket tool because I double clicked on it accidentally. We can say that is black. And I think our inside of our eye, let's see what happens if we set this one to be black. There we go, same thing there, and our eyebrow. And so all of these are the pieces that are black. What I would do if I was then cutting this out is I would have a little four by four inch square of sort of beige or white. And then I'd probably have another four inch by four inch square that is gonna be black. And so I'm gonna move this other part of the eye here over in there. Um, and I guess, I suppose that we would assume that this is gonna be white. So it might, if, if the rest of the whale is sort of a beige, it might need to be its own piece. Cause you can see on the original picture there, if you wanted to mimic that exactly, uh, I don't know if I like that white, but whatever, anyway, that beige there. Uh, we would actually have this be a little like one by one scrap up there or something. And then I would have sort of, I don't know if you can see this, I'll just draw a square to demonstrate it. You're gonna probably have another four inch by four inch piece of vinyl, like sticking in the mat somewhere around here. So you can see there'd be one that would include the whale's body in the background. And then we're gonna have that other one that's going in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of move these pieces around here to see if I can fit it all. And I, I try to be efficient about my vinyl. So I like, you know, I can put the eye inside of there. I can probably even rotate my fin there to kind of fit it up in the top. And what this is allowing me to do <clears throat> is that I can save, you know, if, if this is a four inch by four inch square, I can still save like a section of this right around like this big, you know, that would be usable as another scrap sometime for something else. And that, that's oftentimes where we get our scraps that like, for instance, we're gonna be using for the white uh, eye here. So this is about all we would need to do for the ultra simple uh, killer whale sticker. So we'd need, you know, uh, four pieces of, or I'm sorry, three pieces of vinyl. And then once we're ready to, once we've laid this out, we put those out on the mat. We of course go here to our regular cut settings uh, where we can pick out, you know, vinyl up in here. And uh, you have the different settings for that and you could send to silhouette. I'm not gonna do that now because I'm just demonstrating this for the video. Now that one was really fast and easy we can go ahead and go into our library and let's let's go find a more complicated one just so you can get a sense of how crazy these can be. Uh, let's see, where is, do I have, yeah, here's the cute dog wash. So the cute dog wash, let's zoom out a little bit here. Cute dog wash can demonstrate how quickly things can get quite complicated. So if I right click on this, I can ungroup it. And you know you notice some things, right? Oh, I have to keep ungrouping. Sometimes you have to ungroup multiple times. There we go, now we've got the pieces. So, and like, let's go back to our Google Drive here and we gotta find our cute dog wash. Half of these have the word cute in front of them. It's a little, little annoying. Try Google Drive for free, but we're already paying for it. Why would we try it for free? Uh, where, here's our, here's my cute dog wash. I'll go ahead and download that. Hopefully there are no viruses in my cute dog wash and we can drag that in here. So, you know, this this will allow us to have a, a model here. And yeah, that looks like it's a really crappy graphic, uh, but that's okay, we can still sort of see it if I blow it up. So you can see there's this tub, but there's a bunch of things going on. Like we've got this back part of the tub and it's got the dog on it. So like, what color is that supposed to be? You know, we have the, the brush here and it's sort of obvious that that's red, uh, but there's this yellow piece that might go on top of it. And oh, look, there's another piece hanging off there. I don't even know what to do with that. 
uh, we have this light blue. And so sometimes it, it actually, if I were putting this together, to be honest, I would probably double click on this and look at all those, those crazy, crazy nodes. I would hold down shift, you know, select all the nodes. And I would actually just delete all those points and then kind of make a splash of water or something like this. And then what if I could, and then with the brush, I would grab these nodes here and actually make the brush sort of more circular out like this. And what I'm simulating here is I'm actually imagining myself pasting this sticker together. So let's give these things some color to give you a sense of what that might look like. So brush has the yellow part there, the red handle, and then we have our blue water. And so as I was cutting this out, what I would do is, you know, cut it out and then I'd put the yellow on top and I'd sort of paste them like that. And then you'd have this, this solid, oops, I didn't, if I hold down shift, there we go. Now I can select them both. So once, once you pasted the yellow on top of the red, this would be like one solid sticker and that would be way easier to move around, right? And then this would go on top of the blue. I would sort of paste that on top of the blue and then these would become one thing. So in a sense, it's actually kind of nice sometimes when these things don't fit into each other puzzle piece wise, like the brush was sort of had a, there was a bite taken out of the water spillage on the ground. It's better if you can paste them on top of each other because they'll just stay together better. So again, here with the uh, the water bin, like we have our, our shampoo bottle, uh, there's the cap to it. And then the bottom, I honestly, like I would delete up this, these nodes here and try to clear that out. Oops, I guess we're, I, I must not have clicked on the node right there. There we go. Delete these guys. And I think I want to drag this one down to about here. So let me delete this node too. And we might need some curvature fixing on our lines oh oh it doesn't it doesn't even give me another arrow that or another handle that's okay anyway so this water bottle i'm sorry this shampoo bottle here that's supposed to be colored what orange so we go up here color that orange and you can kind of see how this would more naturally paste on top of this big blue bin if you were making this into a sticker and this will like and actually you can also see with the orange bottle maybe actually it's better to drag these nodes up here to actually have that be a spot where then we can stick the cap on top of it. So, you know, the, the piece underneath it doesn't have to be perfectly fitting, but that this will be a much more coherent sticker rather than trying to have everything pasted on this big background and have them slot in perfectly. I would much rather layer stuff and like, like I might even layer, I guess the, the orange water bottle would go on top of this. So if you do get this with this situation I just ran into, this orange thing is the orange uh, shampoo bottle is behind the water pool. We can go here to object. We should be able to go to our range and bring to front. And well, that's that's great, except for now we have to do the same thing with cap. So object, range, bring forward. Oops, I'm sorry, bring to front. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, arrange, bring to front. Okay, so then this becomes one more coherent sticker piece. So this is what it's like to build up one of these complicated multi-layer stickers. There are a whole bunch of them uh, you can try and play around. Sometimes things are not perfect, like the dark lines on his mustache here. You might need to, these are just single cut lines. You might need to like uh, either thicken that or draw your own, or you may need to mess around with this some, but you can make some pretty darn cool multi-layer stickers. So that's the first method for multi-layer stickers using the library. Uh, note that we we did spend a little bit of money. Well, I shouldn't say that we haven't spent any money at all But we get a free gift certificate every time we buy a silhouette cutter and since we bought like maybe 30 of them We've accumulated a lot of money. So we bought all these designs that you can use uh, Normally, they're like a dollar on the silhouette store uh, and you can make an account for that uh, Okay, so the other method is we can go ahead and find our own sticker out on the worldwide internet and so this might be like uh, not that I want to blatantly teach you to uh, violate copyright agreements for sports teams, but we could say, oh, I don't know, what, what are the, the little kids who come to my lab always ask me about the Miami Heat. They always want a Miami Heat sticker. Uh, so if I do Miami Heat, what I will get uh, with images actually is a lot of the basketball team, but hopefully the logo. So actually maybe you may even want to type logo or vector after that. And... Uh, so this, this one here will probably make a decent-ish sticker. So Okay, I've saved a Miami Heat sticker to my desktop and I've opened it up here in Adobe Photoshop. So again, this is a new tool that you're maybe not used to using. Uh, this is available on all the different FabLab computers. Uh, it, I'm using the 2017 release here. However, it will work all the way back to probably CS2. 
I mean, it, it, this is not a very complicated, th complicated thing we're about to do, but I found a, a JPEG of the Miami Heat, and you'll notice even this one has some gradients going on. These are not just solid colors, but I should be able to make a multi-layer sticker out of this regardless. So I need to have Silhouette open and Adobe Photoshop. And let's see if I can find my uh, magic wand tool over here. So it's on the, the fourth one down. I sort of left click and hold on it and that will allow me to pick over on the magic wand tool. And I can start doing this kind of cool thing here where I can just click on a section and it highlights it all in the, the selection there. And I can just do control C or on Mac, I believe it would be option C to copy it to my clipboard. And I can go to a blank screen in Silhouette Studio and just do control V and look at that. I have just pasted that part of the image in here. Now that's not ready to cut yet, but we'll get there. We can use the trace tool in a second. Uh, so we, we can go ahead and go back to Photoshop and let's see if we can do the veins. So see, look at that. Now I selected the uh, fire part there, but it didn't select everything. So if I go up here to tolerance, let's try and put my tolerance up a little higher to like 50 and let's see what happens now if I select something. Uh, we're getting better, let's, let's maybe and I'm not sure actually, to be honest, if I should be putting my tolerance up higher or lower, but I know you can mess around with that. There we go. So I, I stuck my tolerance all the way up to 66 and that it selects much more of the fire, even though uh, there's a lighter orange and a sort of darker orange, I can, should be able to select multiple of these. Uh, I'm holding down shift as I click on these with the magic wand tool and I select everything that is gonna be part of the orange part of the sticker. Takes a little bit of patience, but just like before, control copy, go back to silhouette, paste it, and look at that. So we already have pieces of our multi-layer sticker, and this is using uh, parts from the internet. So let's go back to Photoshop. And uh, the other thing I guess I'm gonna do is our Miami Heat text. And you'll notice I can be kind of selective about it. There's this odd black background thing surrounding this, but I don't really want that, so I'm not gonna copy it. So I'm just gonna put the Miami Heat piece in there. Now we're not totally done yet. We have to go to our, our uh, trace tool. This is, we use this in the first round in the upper right. There's this open the trace window and I should be able to click on that, select an area to trace. And I can actually trace both of these all the way at once. As usual, I definitely wanna turn off that high pass filter so I can actually trace the whole thing. And I'm gonna just crank my threshold up here so you can see it won't select all the fire if I don't crank that up. So I'm gonna crank that up fairly high and then hit trace. And now I can move these graphics off to the side and I actually just have the traces for my Miami Heat. So now this is uh, obviously all grouped here. Uh, I'm sorry, it's actually one compound path because I traced it all at once, it made it one giant path. So I can release compound path, that will split up like each individual letter. So I may not want those to be split up so I could either select those again and either make them again into a compound path or I could just group them, that would be fine too. Um, in this case, I do want them to be solid, complicated paths, so I'm going to make them compound paths. But this would go on the black uh, sticker area that I might, you know, I'd have a section. Let's uh, go back and preview this. Oh, uh, like a three inch by three inch, or maybe even less. I might be able to do this on three inches by two inches. There we go. A uh, section of black vinyl or dark vinyl, and then the basketball, flaming basketball here would be on a two by six piece of vinyl and that would be ready to cut as a multi-layer sticker. So that's an example. There are lots of things out there that you might go find. You could type vector in almost anything. So you could do like vector robot or like vector car, uh, vector flower, uh, anything that basically has big enough areas, the colors that are solid enough that you can use the trick I just did with the magic wand tool to copy and paste portions of it. And then you would cut those out and paste them together as a multi-layer sticker. So that's uh, pretty much the two options besides the, the other uh, inset outset method. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna run over the inset outset method pretty easily. If you wanna do a, a multi-layer sticker with like say this flaming basketball, uh, it's relatively easy. If I select it here, I can go up to this tool. Uh, you can see like the Pentagon with an arrow on it. That opens up the inset offset tool. And if I do an offset around it, look at that, it just made a surrounding piece. So this part might be say the color black or white and then this part here might be orange and so you can then paste the orange part on top of it and you have sort of a solid sticker there. Uh, you can also go the other way around if I select that and do an internal offset and I'm gonna oh, crank this up a little bit. There we go and make those a little smaller. So this could be yet another layer. So maybe you might have the outer part of your flame be uh, red 
like this this part here would be red and then maybe this part here that I just did I don't know if I want all these little scraggly pieces let's get rid of those those would not cut very well but like this remaining part here that could be orange and then this might be black and you could layer that all together to make a complicated sticker uh, Neha Sharma has put together a tutorial on how to do that uh, so you can follow that if you like uh, or just sort of follow what I just did in the video uh, keep in mind that you're going to want the, all these pieces to stay. It's, it's easier if you keep them at the same distance if it's something complicated like this so that you can then use contact paper when you're applying it in lab. And we'll show you how to do the actual physical parts of the silhouette and the contact paper in person because that's a lot easier to do. So that concludes my tutorial for the three different methods of doing a multi-layer sticker. That's part two. Remember, part one is to do the Griffin sticker for which you can find another video on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.